620 CKRM, the source, and we're joined by another very special guest. We always love our special guests here on 620 CKRM as we welcome Mr. Chad Brownlee. Chad, how you doing today? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on. Hey, anytime, buddy, that we can get you on. Hey, we're glad to have you here. So just off for the fans uh, who don't really know about Chad, tell us where you got your start in music, buddy. Well, that's, that's a good question. I, I was playing music at a, at a really young age, and I was a hockey player most of my life, and mm-hmm. uh, you know had a had a bit of a run at it. Played minor pro, and and about four years ago, I hung them up. And a year after that, I released my first single to country radio, and luckily, people liked it, <laughs> and we just haven't looked back since. For sure, Chad. Now, what was it like to give up hockey? Was it a hard decision? Was it an injury? Um, yeah, it, it definitely was a hard decision, but an easy decision at the same time. And I had surgery on both of my shoulders. Okay. I had dislocated them numerous times. And then uh, my last year playing pro there, I had separated it. And I was out about a month and a half. When I came back, I just wasn't the same player. And I really lost the love and the passion for the game. And, and for me, that was the main reason why I was playing. And uh, as soon as that was gone, it was basically, um, you know, politics that took over. And yep. uh, it wasn't like I was an aspiring NHL superstar by any means. Maybe I could have made it in a few years if I kept, you know, plugging away. But to be honest, I just didn't have the motivation to get to that point. And I figured while I was still young, I'm, I, I got to pursue something else that I'm even more passionate about. And I, I definitely don't regret it. But it, it wasn't an easy decision, but I knew it was the decision I had to make. I'll bet. 2003, what was it like to get that call? Six-round draft choice, Vancouver Canucks, your home province. <laughs> How did that feel? Just one more question about hockey, Chad. Yeah, no problem. It was obviously one of the bigger moments in my life that I'll never forget. And, uh, you know, growing up a Canuck fan, it was pretty cool. I, it was between a few teams. I had talked with the LA Kings, New Jersey Devils, uh-huh. uh, New York Rangers, and the Canucks were kind of the, the top four teams that uh, I, I could have gone to And when my agent called and that I had gone to the Canucks, it was pretty cool. Um, and again, a day that I'll never forget. For sure, Chad. Tell us about that. You now, if uh, some people don't know, you went to university at Minnesota State NCAA Hockey Humanitarian Award. Is that when you first knew that your songwriting was going to take off when you won the award for the Hero I See? Yeah, it was um, It was just the nomination um, alone was, uh, was really nice. Just to, you know, people were recognizing what was going on, but it wasn't the recognition that uh, I wrote the song for. It was to raise raise money for Anthony Ford, who was the young boy who passed away from leukemia. Yep. Um, and, uh, you know, he, he hit home for so many people. So it was nice to be able to, to use music to carry on someone's life. And I think that was a moment where I thought, wow, music is very, very powerful, that it can affect people's lives and, and carry on those that have passed. And and that definitely had an impact on me as a songwriter because I felt music in such an emotional way. I wanted to just keep writing and, and keep doing it. So it was obviously a tragedy, um, but you know, through tra- tragedy, there's there's obviously some positive that you need to look at. And uh, for me personally, that that was the positive is that it really saw it helped me see the musician inside mm-hmm. of myself. And, and I'm just happy I was able to carry on Anthony's legacy. For sure. Winner of the 2011 Canadian Country Music Awards Rising Star. This year, you're up for Male Artist of the Year with the likes of Johnny Reed, Dean Brody, Gord Bamford, Jason Blaine. What's it like this year to be in that kind of company, Chad? Yeah, it's pretty crazy, you know, just hearing all those names. Uh, I mean, really good company. I mean, all those guys have been around for for a lot of years, and, and they've written some great songs, and they're, you know, fantastic performers. So just to be mentioned alongside those guys is great. For sure. Touring with Dirks Bentley this year, Country and Cold Cans Tour 2012. What's it like out there touring with Dirks? It's unreal. My favorite tour thus far. I mean, yeah. uh, he's such a down-to-earth, nice guy, and, and we both like our hockey, so he was uh, he was a lot of fun to hang out with, and all the guys in his band and the crew were so welcoming, and um, that was the biggest part for me, you know, just the, the people that they were. I mean, they're fantastic performers and entertainers. Um, but you know, when you're on the road for that long, it's, it's, uh, it's very important to be able to get along with everybody and, and Dirks is <clears throat> so accommodating. And every time we see him now after that, uh, you know, we get along great. So it was, uh, it was a great relationship. Perfect. What was it like this year? Craven country jamboree closing out the weekend, Sunday night, man, that must've been a great feeling. Oh, it was unbelievable. Yeah. I keep reflecting back to that show. Actually, um, the fans made it easy for us that night. I mean, they were so amped up, I think, from the Brad Paisley show. Um, you know, and as soon as they came over to ours, they were ready to hear some more music. So, and, I, and the band played great. 
had a lot of fun. I think we played for almost two hours. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't want to leave the stage. It was a blast. <laughs> you could have just kept playing right until the next morning, eh? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, with all that <laughs> adrenaline and all that fun. Yeah, we didn't want to stop. Now, kind of during the playoffs this year, I love the way you get involved with hockey through the internet and through your music. Tell us about No Silver Cup. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was a fun little song uh, that kind of went viral there for a week or so. And, that it did, yeah. Uh, it, it spawned from Brett Kissel, who had written a song. Yeah. Uh, to I think an Alan Jackson song. It was kind of a backhanded apology for his remarks on the Canucks being kicked out of the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, uh, he, he's <laughs> he's an Oiler fan, so uh, obviously somewhat biased. So when I saw that, I figured, well, here's my opportunity to to write a comeback. You know, I felt I had an allegiance to my Canucks fans. So, <laughs> and it's not really you know bashing any team in particular. It's more of a a fun kind of tongue in cheek song, making fun of ourselves for not even winning the Stanley Cup and. Um, if you haven't if you haven't seen it already, you know go check it out. Uh, no Silver Cup, Chad Brownlee, and uh, it's it's all in good fun. I mean, some people take it a little bit more seriously, but uh, <laughs> it was all for a laugh. Those hardcore downtown rioters, they'll take it seriously, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, we won't go there. Okay, uh, tell us now. You've come a long way since sitting on the hood of my car. Uh, tell us about your song "Love Me or Leave Me." One of my favorite, my actual favorite, Chad Brownlee song, uh, "Love Me or Leave Me." Tell us about that one, Chad. Right on. Yeah, that's. I think that song it kind of shows the next level of you know where we are as a band and where yeah. I am as an artist, and um, you know it's a little bit more rock, a little bit more up tempo, and that seems to be the direction that we're going right now, and. Uh, it does epitomize this album, uh, which we're very proud of. I mean, we had some great musicians and producers and engineers work on this album, and and uh, "Love Me or Leave Me" being one of those songs that encompasses that collection. So, yeah, we're we're very proud of it. What's it like having a superstar guitar player like Haley McLean playing with you? Man, she is great. I had a chance to interview her back then, uh, about a month ago. And uh, all we did was sit there and talk shop because I myself am a little bit of a musician. I know lots about guitar and drums, and we pretty much talk shop the whole time. But what's it like having Haley up there with you, Chad? Yeah, she's great. I mean, such an incredible talent, has a lot of energy uh, on stage, which is nice. And um, it's just so funny to, to see the look on people's faces that have never seen her play before. They For kind sure. of see this young girl sitting up there and. <laughs> holding this guitar and and i'm sure they're doubting her capabilities as soon as until her fingers start to move and, exactly. and you can just hear the crowd cheer and as soon as she starts to take over a solo i mean her musicality is phenomenal she's uh, a very very rare talent so yep. um it's always nice performing with her awesome chad so what does the future hold for mr chad brownlee uh, the future is just, you know, keep writing and, and keep touring and playing shows. It's it's a constant evolution, uh, like most artists will tell you. And, um, but really, I don't look too far ahead. I, I like to enjoy the the day that's at hand and, and kind of live in the moment. Um, and I've just been enjoying every moment, so I, I can't complain. Well, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon, Chad. We wish you all the best in the future, and we keep loving those songs. And you know what? We're going to keep playing them right here on 620 CKRM. Thank you so much for joining us today, Chad, and uh, all the best to you and everybody, and take care. Awesome. Thanks so much, Ryan. Appreciate it, man.